All right, so one question that we can conquer, uh, according with our, our derivatives and the idea that a derivative is a, what's a derivative again? Uh, okay, glad you're awake today for Tuesday. Congratulations, that's awesome. Uh, we can conquer the idea of, can we find out where functions will have horizontal tangent lines? Firstly, what do you know about a line that is horizontal, something about its slope? Zero. Slope would be zero for a horizontal line, true? So if we were trying to look for lines that are horizontal to our original function, how do you find the slope of the original function? A derivative. a derivative would give you slope. Yeah, absolutely. So if we found the derivative of our original function, and we found out where that was equal to a slope of zero, then we're going to be able to find the points where we have a horizontal tangent line. Here's how you would do that. Number one, take your derivative of your function. Go ahead and do that now. So do dy dx, or y prime, if you'd like. Take your derivative. Come on, we got this last time. Take your derivative. Derivatives now should be, oh man, this should be really quick. Shoot, if we had to do the limit for this derivative, that would take forever, right? It wouldn't be that great. But now we can do it in literally like five seconds. Like literally five seconds, crazy. Uh, what's the derivative for y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4? What is that? Great, because I told you you can take it term by term. 3x squared absolutely minus how much? What happens to the 4? That's a constant. Derivative of constants gives you 0 if it's not attached to a variable. Did you get 3x squared minus 3? Okay. What does this give you again? So this right here is your slope. Of that curve. That's the slope of that curve. What I want to know is where this curve has tangent lines which are horizontal. What we found out earlier is that the slope of the tangent line is the slope of the curve at the point. Does that make sense? So if this is the slope of the curve at any point, and we want that slope to be zero, can you set that equal to zero? So if you set this, the idea is we want it to be horizontal, right? Horizontal means a slope of zero. So basically we want a slope, a slope of zero. Zero means horizontal. Can you do that for any slope you were looking for, say if you wanted a slope where it equals two? Absolutely. So if I want a slope of 1, I'd have it equal to 1. Probably be hard to solve in this particular case, but you can do it. Yeah, this is a formula for slope. So if we set it equal to whatever we want, now the idea is we're typically going to pick horizontal because interesting things happen when you have a slope equal to 0. That, that, that really does have interesting things. For instance, this. At this point up at the top, Notice positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. Do you see that? Therefore, at the top, it has to have a slope of zero. That would be a change from increasing to decrease, and that would give you a relative maximum, sometimes an absolute maximum of your function. So interesting things happen there. Curves are optimized normally when you have some sort of a slope equal to zero. So this is going to be the most common question I'm going to ask of you as far as relate the slope to some number. It's typically, typically going to be zero. you follow the idea? Now can you solve that? Hey, that's just some basic algebra. So if we solved it, how might you solve it? Factor out three and take the squares. You could. You could do factor three, difference of squares, you're going to get one and negative one. Do you see it? Or if you added three, divided by three and took a square root, you'd still have one and negative one. Do you see it either way? So either way, because when you take a square root, you have plus and minus. I like the factoring version. Sure, we get x squared minus one equals zero. That's three x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, therefore x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1. Hey, do something for me real quick. Just verify this for your own edification here, for your own knowledge. Uh, take those, plug it into that. Take these and plug it into that and see what you get, okay? Just so you see what happens here. Take a negative 1 and plug it in. How much do you get? You get 0. Take 1 and plug it in. How much do you get? So would you agree that these are the points where your slope is going to equal 0? These are the points where you're going to have a horizontal tangent. These are the actually not the points. I misspoke. These are the x values. 
can you now find the points at which you will have a horizontal tangent? The points. These are your x values. How do you find points? To this one? No, that gives you slopes. That would give you points. So the points would be at, all right, well, let's see here. If x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, if I plug in negative 1 and I plug in 1, these two points will have horizontal tangent lines. Plug in negative 1, how much do you get out of that? 6? Okay. Plug in positive 1, how much do you get out of that? Those right there are the two points where you will have horizontal tangent lines. Nowhere else. That's it. I can say for certain nowhere else because we have found the function for the slope. We said equal to zero and we solved it. And these are the only two points that existed. That's it. How many people understood the idea of a horizontal tangent? It's kind of interesting, right? Cool. You know, last thing in our section really is we can also talk about higher derivatives. We've been taking first derivatives this whole time, which means you take the derivative of the function and that's it. Right now, we're going to, I'm going to tell you that you can take a second derivative and a third derivative and as many as you want to take. So we're going to look at higher derivatives. I do need to tell you the notation, though, how we say, how we write out a first and a second and a third and a fourth. So here's a first derivative, second derivative, we'll talk about a third, and you can go further and further and further, however many derivatives you want to take. Our notation for a first derivative was typically this, f prime of x, you remember that one, right? Or we have... Uh, y prime, you can write y prime, or dy dx. Those are the, the main three. We stick with those normally. Actually, in this class, we'll be sticking with this one, and that one typically is where we, where we like to go. You are with that so far? That should be like old school stuff. Well, not old school. It's all new for you, but like from the, uh, uh, the previous section. So we have that. Second derivative say this. You take your first derivative, then you take a derivative of that. So for instance, could you take a derivative of this? Yeah, it'd be pretty easy. You'd get how much? You get 6x. Very good. That would be called a second derivative. Second derivatives are notated this way. So this is the f prime of x. You'd say f double prime of x. If I took another derivative, I'd have f triple prime of x. And you just keep on writing little dash marks. Uh, some people I've, I've seen put a little four up there for fourth derivative. I know we rarely get to a fourth derivative, but you could. Uh, you, but you keep on writing those little dash marks. This is called the, the Newtonian method of, of writing um, derivatives. But you see, there's these two guys, uh, Isaac Newton and Sir Godfrey Leibniz, who invented calculus about the same time. One of them was English. I think Newton was English, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Leibniz was German. And of course, back then, the nations want to say, well, we invented calculus. This is ours. And so they kind of stuck with their own notation. And, and uh, this, this right here is the Newton's way of doing it. He used little dots. And this is the Leibniz way of doing it. And we still have that notation to this day. So this comes from the, the German guy, and this comes from the English guy, uh, how they notated it. And we still use that. And each of them have their advantages. Um, this one, I'll show you some advantages to this later on, why it's kind of nice, why I do it this way. Uh, first, because of my German heritage, you know, but the, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, because we actually can do some pretty cool things with this type of notation. I'll show you that, especially when we get to like differential equations, things like that. All right, um, now y prime, you'd still stick with the y double prime, y triple prime, and so on. Uh, the dy dx does this, a little bit different. It says, okay, this is a first derivative of y with respect to x, okay, one time. This says, take a second derivative of y with respect to x both times. That's how I think of it. So you have a little 2 saying that's a second derivative. This is a third derivative 
with respect to x every time. So we keep on putting on another number. That's a little bit more concise than those, those little dash marks. I like that a little bit better. It looks better. You can see it more. Have like, also, if you're going through and you just, oh, lost one, well, that would suck, right? Because then you don't know. But it's hard to screw up a 2 and a 3. Well, maybe not. Maybe not that hard. But harder than messing up a dash mark. Are you guys okay with the, the derivative notation? First, second, third? What I'd like to do now, just for fun, can you find all of the higher derivatives of this? find all the higher derivatives there. So start with the first derivative, find the first derivative, then find the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one, then the fifth one, then the sixth one, and see what happens. Okay, I want you to keep going. Did you find them? Are you still working on it? Still working on it? Keep going. If not, well, let's, let's start up here. First derivative, can you please tell me what the first derivative is on this? Mm -hmm. 20x cubed. You got that one, right? Okay, then I, I heard 27x squared, yes? Minus 10x. Minus 9x squared. What did I do? Oh, 27. I actually cubed it. My bad. I was on this one. Shoot. I guess 3 times 3 is 9. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, what else do we have? Nine. Yeah, my bad. What happens with 347? What? Bye-bye. Here's what's interesting, too. What if I did made this 34,755? Would this derivative change? So that constant really has no effect on your derivative. We're talking about the slope, right? So all this is is really a shift upward or downward. So if we're just shifting the whole function up or down, it doesn't affect the slope of the function. It says, oh, now it's way up here, now it's way down here. So that really doesn't affect it, which is interesting. Okay, uh, next up, second derivative. We just take the derivative again. So we're going to do, uh, two, oh, what's 28 times 3? What do you do? x squared minus 18x, you got that one right, minus 10. What happens to the 9? It's a constant. It goes away. Now what? Okay. Then we take the derivative again, and yeah, we're going to get 168, and again, that, that constant goes away, 168. Well, let's do the fifth derivative. What's the fifth, what's the derivative of 168? 